Hello, my name is Daniel Chang, and I'm a cataract and refractive surgeon and managing partner at Empire Eye and Laser Center in Bakersfield, California. In this video, I'll provide a brief overview and discuss the context behind our recent publication, Presbyopia Treatments by Mechanism of Action, a new classification system based on a review of the literature. For a variety of reasons, presbyopia is a challenging condition to treat for individuals and an enormous problem to address for society as a whole. First of all, many presbyopia treatments have been bundled with the correction of static refractive errors, and this association can sometimes make the process more difficult. Additionally, since presbyopia treatments bring inherent compromises to the optical system, these treatments frequently raise new issues for patients. Another challenge is the common approach to understanding presbyopia correction by characterizing treatments based on the device used, which does not provide insight into the optical principles employed by that treatment. This approach renders our decision-making process to being more based on trial and error rather than being directed by the underlying methodology. In the interest of providing clinicians a new framework for approaching presbyopia treatment on an individualized basis, we performed a literature search and proposed a new classification system for presbyopia treatment based on the optical mechanism of action. It is hoped that our work will provide a more complete understanding of the optical principles leveraged by a given presbyopia treatment, thus offering a more balanced assessment of the associated risks and benefits, as well as safety and efficacy outcomes. The first issue we address is a limitation in nomenclature. While significant progress has been made over the past two centuries to understand the anatomic and physiologic mechanism of accommodation, there is in fact no universally accepted term or phrase to describe the actual goal of accommodation. When we treat presbyopia in the clinic, what are we actually aiming to achieve? We want to provide the same ability that natural accommodation provides, and for this, we propose the term functional through focus with imperceptible latency. With this terminology in mind, we next categorize classes of presbyopia treatments according to how they establish or re-establish the eye's ability to achieve functional through focus with imperceptible latency. We arrive at four distinct mechanisms of action, varying the refractive power, one, over time, two, across the visual field, three, between eyes, or four, across a range of distances. Within these categories, there are various methods for achieving functional through focus. For example, natural accommodation varies the refractive power over time. Multifocal spectacles vary refractive power across the visual field. The methods for achieving monovision all vary the refractive power between eyes, and small aperture inlays, diffractive IOLs, and an eye drop that induces meiosis are all methods for varying the refractive power across a range of distances. There is one final point of emphasis in our paper I would like to share. There is growing evidence that some presbyopia treatment options, particularly those that vary the refractive power across the visual field or between eyes, actually increase the risk of falls and injuries. Couple this with how presbyopia decreases work productivity globally, leading to enormous direct and indirect costs, and what emerges is the importance of approaching the treatment of presbyopia as more than simply a lifestyle decision. Ultimately, the new classification system we propose seeks to give clinicians a powerful resource for understanding treatment options by mechanism, which in turn will help us to achieve the laudable goal of improving patient safety, well-being, and quality of life as a function of restoring their youthful vision.